Hi everyone, welcome back to the AI Explained video series. Uh, so last time we discussed Shapley values and how they can be used for explaining uh, machine learning model predictions. Uh, if you recall, Shapley values are an attribution method. They explain a prediction by attributing it to the features of the, of the input. So the attributions are essentially scores that you assign to each feature that is proportional to the feature's contribution. So today uh, we'll discuss another attribution method called integrated gradients that is very well suited to deep learning models. Uh, so integrated gradients was developed as Google and Google and for full disclosure I was involved in developing them so I have a vested interest in telling you about it. Okay, so before telling you about integrated gradients, let's look at a simpler attribution method. So suppose we were explain, we were attributing the prediction of a, a linear model. Then the one way to attribute it, is, one way to attribute it is to simply look at the feature value times the coefficient. So if your linear model is you know y equal to w1 x1 plus w2 x2 to w1 xn, where w1 w2 are the coefficients and x1 x2 are the feature values, then the contribution of the ith feature is wi times xi. So it's feature value times coefficient. Now the same idea is applied to nonlinear models. Now in a nonlinear model, you don't have a coefficient available. So what people do is instead they look at the gradient. So they look at the gradient of the output with respect to that feature. More mathematically, the partial derivative of the output with respect to that feature. So the method is feature times gradient that they apply to explain, uh, to attribute predictions of nonlinear model. This, uh, this has been a popular method, it dates back to at least 2010. There's a paper in 2010, which uh, I think if I remember correctly, that was the one that first proposed this. Now, now when you apply this method to these highly nonlinear deep learning models, what happens is you sometimes get bizarre looking attributions. So for instance, if we apply this to an object recognition model, where we attribute the prediction to pixels, which are the features of the image, and so we highlight the pixels according to the attribution they receive. Then we find that irrelevant pixels are getting highlighted. So for instance, if you look at this image on the left, which is predicted as firebolt, and if we attribute its predict, attribute the firebolt prediction to, to pixels, then we find that all these pixels underneath the, the bridge are getting highlighted. Now that's a bit bizarre, right? Because those pixels, we don't expect them to be to be relevant to the fireboat, like why would it predict a fireboat label given those pixels? So, so why is this attribution method not faithfully capturing the, the model's behavior? So it turns out that this feature times gradient, this method is not so useful if the model function is flat in the vicinity of the input. So to, to see this, consider a uh, a function with a single variable. So you have a single feature x, so y is equal to f of x. Now if it so happens that f is flat in the vicinity of x, then dy by dx, which is the gradient of, of the output with respect to x, would be zero. And so this feature times gradient thing will give you will give you zero, making you believe that that x is an irrelevant, is, ir, is completely irrelevant to this particular prediction. The same thing happens with these deep learning models. Because we train them to saturation, the prediction score is near flat in the vicinity of the input, which means that if I take this fireboat image and I just perturb pixels locally, there will be not much change to the fireboat label. And it, that's not hard to see, right? If I, if I take away a few pixels from this, it's still going to remain a fireboat. So to fix this, what we do is, so we desaturate the network. So we take the image, which is this fireboat image, and we dial down the brightness of it all the way to black. Now, when, when you have the black image, the network says the prediction of the fireboat label is zero. It's a neutral point. And this original image, the prediction is, let's say, one point or so it's 100% sure that it's a fireboat. But now, as we scale, we track the prediction score. And it turns out that the prediction jumps from 0 to 1 somewhere at the 0.3 mark. So I'm slowly increasing the brightness. You know, it's fully dark 
and now gradually the fireboat is emerging you know the brightness of the image is increasing and roughly at the 0.3 marks the mark the network makes up it makes up its mind that this is a fireboat after that it largely stays at that 1.0 mark so after that there are there aren't that many the, the gradients aren't interesting right because there is no activity in the model score the place where the prediction is going up that's the gradient that's interesting that's what you want to capture so this picture sort of gives us the method what we do is we take the input at hand we take a certain baseline input you know think of in the image in case of image models think of a black image we take the straight line path from this input to this baseline and we integrate the gradients along the path informally we we basically interpolate along this path and average the gradients this gives us much better looking attributions you, know, you can see here that the 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 fireboat is getting highlighted the water spouts are getting highlighted you know, these are more relevant features uh, for the fireboat label so the method is simply take the input take the baseline and integrate the gradient along a straight line path from input to baseline now you may be wondering what is this baseline that i talk about you know why why have an additional parameter so so it is a it is an additional parameter that goes into the integrated gradients method uh, a, ideally a baseline is an informationless input that you are essentially diffing the input at hand against it's kind of analogous to the counterfactuals involved in the shapley value computation so if you remember from the shapley value video in computing shapley values we have to turn off individual features and to do that we would basically draw the feature value from some counterfactual instances and we would turn features off one by one the baseline in integrated gradients is an input that turns off all the features at once so essentially you you start with a point which is completely off and then you move to the point at hand and you see how the activity how the prediction in the of the network changes and you sort of you sort of lock that prediction change through gradients so now coming to the final bit how do we justify integrated gradients you know there are like 17 different attribution methods out there so how do we know this is uh, this is giving us meaningful results now evaluating model explanation methods is, is really challenging the issue is that it's like we are trying to explain an alien mind and we don't have any ground proof for what you know how how that reasons so you can't quite do your usual empirical eval where you know i have some held out data and i have ground truth labels and i just apply my method to it to see how well it does on this held out data we have no such thing here so for integrated gradients again inspired by shapley values we take an axiomatic approach so we lay out axioms which are much like the shapley value axioms that specify properties that an attribution method ought to satisfy and then we show that integrated gradients is the unique method that satisfies uh the satisfies those properties uh, the proof is somewhat technical so i suggest uh, that you look at the paper or maybe we can cover the proof in in another video so so in summary integrated gradients is a method to attribute the prediction of deep learning models or more generally any differentiable models it can be implemented in a few lines of code all you need to do is make a few gradient calls uh to to your model it's much faster uh, to compute than shapley values however it comes with this limitation that the model has to be differentiable so gradients have to be available so in contrast shapley values make no such place no such restrictions on the model so shapley values can work with any model function and they only require black box access to the model whereas integrated gradients requires the model to be differentiable and requires you to have access to the gradients of the model but once you have that then it's very fast to compute